do you think, Justin? Week one. Yeah, let's finish week one. How does it feel? Feels like the beginning of uh, of an epic ending. <laughs> Is it fair to say that this will be the best one? <laughs> In my heart, yes. Oh! <laughs> well, hello, children. Where's my music? Come on. There we go. Uh, how's it going, everybody? Sorry for the lateness. But I am here. We're gonna film Junkie Live on your Monday, May 2nd. It's gonna be May. How many times did you see that over the weekend? Oh, that good old meme right there. Everything sounded good, everything good. How's everybody doing out there? Ah, oh, all right. Yeah, you guys are already partying already. That's right, we got Nighthawk. How's it going, Steph? We got Mama Film Junkie here as well. Hello, hello, hello. Good to see you, Mom. I know, you always try to cancel me, Jacob. How dare you, sir? How dare you? Ah, uh, of course, of course, you know. I know, I'm on your guys' schedule, not my own. <laughs> Just kidding. What's going on? We got we got Captain Gator Girl here as well. All right, Derek singing some stuff. Uh, hello, darling. We got Matia right there. Good to see you. Yep, we got, hey, what's going on, Stephanie T? All right, Eric Patterson's right here. Okay, we got Ryan. All right, the Meta Gala. Yeah, I know, right? And what's funny about that, and I just tweeted that out, was the fact that it's like, you know, there's going to be people dressed as wizards tonight at the premiere of Doctor Strange 2, but that's going to look way more normal than what the fuck happens at the Met Gala. I don't even... That's cult shit, man. <laughs> I don't know. People who are like, you know, when I see it on the timeline and just the way these celebrities dress and then people are like, oh my God, look at them. I don't understand this. That that kind of celebrity worship is weird to me. That's all I gotta say. What's going on? We got Selena Kyle is here. Hey, we got Rosemary. Uh, had a pretty good weekend. It was uh, pretty lazy. Tried to get some things done, some things tweaked and stuff on here. Yeah, we got hey music man. What's going on, Mr. Khan? All right, we got that Shane right here. Love you too, man. Love you too. All right. Thank you guys for showing up. Yeah. Um, yeah. When it came to my weekend, like I said, it was pretty uh, I caught up. I'm not didn't fully catch up, but I, you know, have young justice on. I remember I talked about that on the vodka stream with Jordan. I was like, hey, I got to catch up on that show. So I had that playing all weekend uh, trying to catch up on that. And then, yeah, just trying to work on stuff, tweaking things here and there. Now I'm uh, I'm working on some. I mean, there's some things that will actually pop up if. Somebody becomes a new member, somebody donates a super chat, uh, new subscriber. I don't know if it actually is going to work. Uh, the testing shows that it works, I don't know. But it's supposed to be a pop-up that's going to pop up when that kind of stuff happens. So, yeah. So, just little tweaks that I was doing here. And I'm trying to tweak stuff when it comes to the vodka stream, too, to make that a little more cool. But other than that, yep, yeah, it's pretty much uh, that. And of course, uh, I had the Patreon stream last night, which was great. Thank you, Jose, Philip, Eric, uh, William, who showed up uh, right at the last moment. And uh, who else was there? <laughs> I can't, I'm trying to remember everybody that showed up on the Patreon stream. So, is it going to work? Come on, is it going to work? Ah, oh, I see. I see you did. It didn't work. See, that's what I'm talking about. It's supposed to freaking pop up, but it didn't pop up. But uh, there you go. Well, thank you. Oh, geez. Hold on. I don't even have that up. See, technical stuff. Thank you, Mr. Jason uh, McKinsey, for your ge generous donation. I don't know. Like I said, I, I had it ready to go, but apparently it just didn't do it. Oh, man, it's not even doing that. See, technical difficulties already happening. Um, my... There it goes. Hey, it popped up. Took a little bit, but there you go. <laughs> Jeez, I didn't know it was going to be that delayed. There you go. Something I just added right there. So, yeah, something I guess it takes uh, probably about a 10 second delay or something like that. I don't know. I don't know what was happening with that, but uh, whew. OK, so there you go. There's some fancy little stuff right here. Doesn't remember a lady was there. Oh, yeah, that's right. Cat was there. Thank you, Cat. Cat here in the. 
Uh, yeah, no, because usually it's a sausage fest, like everybody always says. But uh, Kat also showed up on the Patreon stream, so thank you guys for uh, joining that last night. That was a lot of fun. And uh, like I said, if you want to join the next one, just join the Patreon. Like I said, I'll try to get some more stuff that's going on in there. So anyways, guys, all right, let's get the show started. Am I too loud? Let me turn it down. It looks like I'm redlining a little bit here. Am I sounding okay? Huh? But, uh, yeah. And who else was... Wasn't there also... <laughs> Philip, Jose, of course, Jose, and, uh, yeah, Eric, and uh, William showed up last, and then Kat was there, and then, yeah, I mean, it was a fun time. It was a fun time, definitely. Oh, yeah, and Carrie. There you go, Carrie. That's who I was forgetting, so. Thank you guys for showing up to that last night. We went three hours. Those Patreon streams are almost turning into vodka streams now, man. I tell you what. I tell you what. All right, let's go ahead and get started here, and uh, let's see. All right, oops, I always forget to turn that off. All right. Yeah, so now, if I miss uh, something like that, it'll pop up, like, right there or something like that. So just a little feature that was added on, and I'm trying to add something else on, too, which would be pretty cool for the stream, so we'll see what happens. Anyways, here we go. All right. Let's get started right here. Uh, you guys can get your Jurassic World World domi um, Dominion, almost a domination, which it could very well be. Uh, you could change the alert delay settings. Yeah, that's what I probably didn't check there. So uh, it'll get to that point. And you know what's sad is now that I'm on a different screen, I forgot to add it on this too. So thank you, Ben. Thank you for the $5 super chat. Always helping me out with this kind of stuff. I didn't research it as much as I should have. But anyways, all right, so hopefully you guys got your tickets to Jurassic World Dominion. Also, too, cheers. I do have my Monday wine with me right here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Still, still I've, I've, I know I've had the uh, Streamlabs for so, for, well, not a year or anything like that. Probably like half a year, and I'm still learning shit, so. But yeah, you can get your uh, Jurassic World Dominion tickets, so I don't know if you you have that and then this is pretty cool art right here of battinson i like it holding the pearls holding the pearls right there i like that holding his mom's pearls martha martha and yes guys last thursday i had to go to jury duty that was fun um you know what's funny about uh, the county that i live in in southern california is you don't get a, an exact date that you have to report to jury duty. You get a week. You got you, you basically you get the summons and it says, hey, you're going to you got to report to jury duty sometime in the week of whatever. So basically every night I had to call to check and see if I had to go in to report for jury duty. And then, of course, I had to do it Thursday morning. So, uh, yeah, took about a half a day. But thank God. Thank God. I got I got excused. I got excused. Took a bit. Like I said, it took about four hours, almost five hours, but I did get excused. I, I didn't do uh, what Pauly Shore did right here and hide my arm in my jacket and say, Mother! I thought about it, but uh, no. Um, I learned, like, oh, okay, that's, that, that could be another way to get excused, but I got excused, so it was great. Because the last time I did jury duty, I actually got picked, and I was a juror for, like, a three-day trial, which was weird. I don't know if anybody's actually done that, but... Uh, yeah, it's interesting. It's very interesting. So, anyways, so that was my Thursday morning. Good times. Good times. All right, we'll talk about that, too. And then, hey, look at this. Okay, so remember last week we were talking about Andrew Garfield. Uh, I probably shouldn't even show because this is ABC and it's whatever the hell. But uh, basically, Andrew Garfield, right here, Gar Garfield was on The View last week. And when people were talking about him taking a break, he specified that he's taking a short break. I have no desire to I, quit acting. I have enough money to, to be uh, uh, living in a camper van for the rest of my So, like, you know how I mean, there was literal people that thought that he was retiring. I don't know why people are. I, it's weird how the Internet just kind of spins things and goes like, you know, it's just like, oh, yeah, Andrew Garfield's going to take a short break. Then all of a sudden it just goes through like numerous filters like he fucking retired, man. He saw Morbius and he retired or something like that. I don't know. But a lot there was like there's people that I think were actually thinking that he was just like walking away from acting. It's like, no, he's going to take a short break. He's going to recalibrate you know or, you know that's what he says recharge the batteries i mean the man has been through a lot in the past couple of years all right i mean he had to go on all these little campaigns for movies that he was doing promote movies and keep getting asked over and over and over again that he was going to be if he's going to be in spider-man no way home and he kept having to lie 
So, I mean, geez, give the man a break. He needs a break. That's what I think, you know, so, so don't worry. He's going to be okay. And then there's the lovely, uh, of course, uh, Anya Taylor-Joy doing some uh, magazine shoots. It's those eyes, man. It's those eyes. She was great in The Northman. That whole movie is fantastic. Um, Babylon, of course, is going to be coming out. Damon uh, Chazelle. Uh, but I thought uh, the Hollywood Reporter right here, they said, Babylon marks a reunion for Robbie and Pitt, who starred alongside each other in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And I'm just kind of going like, well, uh, they didn't star alongside each other. They didn't even share a fucking screen. Uh, they didn't even share a scene in the movie. So there's a little weird choice of words right there from the Hollywood Reporter. It's like, yeah, I get it. it's a kind of a reunion, but they didn't share a scene together. Their characters never cross paths. It's like, did you guys watch the movie? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. And here's the Avatar sequels right here. The Way of the Water, The Seed Bearer, The Tolkien Writer, and The Quest for Iwa. Iwa? That's right. Every two years, all the way to 2028, we're going to get an Avatar movie. So that first fucking sequel better be, better be killer because, man, they are 100% backing up. And we've talked about, we talked about this on the Vodka stream. We talked about this even on the Patreon stream. It's like, wow. Um, they are really just, uh, ha- they have a lot of faith in Mr. James Cameron, which they should. It's James Cameron. The guy is uh, responsible for where we are right now when it comes to cinema and all the technical stuff that has to do with making, you know, VFX and just everything that he's, everything that he's achieved in his movies, his iconic movies. But man, I tell you what, just the, the fact that he literally is going to have five movies, Avatar movies, by the end of this decade, it's just that's insane because usually they just oh we got to put it on a streaming service. Just put it on a stream and just make it a just make it a streaming series, you know. But yeah, so there you go, the upcoming sequels right there. <laughs> yeah, uh, you said you would pirate it. Oh, you're one of those people that like to declare that you like to steal things. Huh? That's not good, Mattia. Come on, you're better than this. Uh, anyways, <laughs> um, so yeah, there all that is. And then Frank Miller right here, he unveils his new comics, launches indie publishing banner right here from The Hollywood Reporter. Frank Miller launches independent publishing uh, company, New Sin City. Yeah, he's going to bring back Sin City, FMP. So we got some Frank Miller stuff coming in. Man, does he look like an angry son of a bitch, doesn't he? But I love it. I love it. I love the hat. I love everything about that. So Frank Miller coming back with some original content, bringing back Sin City as well. So that's pretty exciting stuff. Um, this is funny. Bread. Yeah, there you go. Bread right there. I like it. And then, of course, come on. Can we stop it? Can we stop it with the titles changing the letter A into a four or the letter E into a three? Can we stop that? All right. Okay, it's been done numerous and numerous and numerous times. But yes, the official title for Expendables is going to be Expend Forbles. That's right. Expend f- Expend Forbles. Are you guys ready to see in- Expend Forbles? Yeah, that's right. That's as good as Fan Four Stick, right? Ugh. Even though Fan Four Stick didn't really sound, they didn't really change that. They just put the four like right in between there. But yeah, Expend Forbles right there. That's right. <laughs> nothing wrong with that, I guess. You know what? You know, I mean, it was kind of funny because uh, Steven actually pushed back on it. And it's like, and he, and he made the point of like, well, this movie is just full of tropes and cliches anyways. Why not have Expendables 4, you know, be Expend Forbles? But I'm like, come on. It's, it's, let's stop it with changing the letters into, uh, and changing the, the letters into, into numbers. Please, please. What's going on, Logan? How you doing? Anyways, okay, and uh, John Wick spinoff Ballerina starring Ana de Armas will start filming this summer. So if anybody was like craving more Ana de Armas when it came to seeing her character in No Time to Die, which I thought she was badass and it was just like a great, the scene that she was in, she was only one scene, sadly, but she kicked ass and she was very likable, very, um, you know, funny 
too, by the way. Um, for anybody who is wanting more of her kicking ass, well, you know, since we're not going to get anything from the James Bond world, and speaking of that, they are trying to find a James Bond. I don't know if you saw the rumors that Henry Cavill, Tom Hardy, Idris Elba, some of the names that are going to be, that are might be chosen for, uh, for James Bond. But anyways, besides that, Ballerina, spinoff starring her, is going to be filming, and that's going to be expanding the John Wick world. We also have um, the Continental show, I believe. That's still coming out, so hopefully we're getting, and then John Wick Chapter 4. Great. But yes, they are. I don't have it in my tweets right now because it's all just here's. It's all just hearsay. Objection. Hearsay. Um, that, yes, the rumor is that Henry Cavill's being looked at for James Bond for 007, Tom, Tom Hardy, Idris Elba, pretty much all the fan casts for what's happening when it comes to uh, when it comes to James Bond. And I mean, Cavill seems like a perfect choice. He really does, you know, because he's still in his 30s. I think Idris Elba is a little too older, but then again, maybe they'll go for an older Bond. But then again, Daniel Craig made it to the, be an older Bond. I don't know. I thought they would go younger, to be honest, and I thought that would be the right approach, just go really go younger this time, go for somebody like in their 20s. But no, maybe they don't want to do that. And uh, so I'm like, OK, well, I mean, if I had to choose between the list that's there, of course, I'd choose Cavill. But I know um, some people out there are like, oh, wait a minute, if he does that, he's not going to be Superman again. It's like, yeah, well, he's not going to wait around for a call from Warner Brothers. So if he does end up being James Bond, then yes, that probably that probably reduces the chances of him being back as Superman. Personally, it's like I'd rather have them have maybe like an unknown actor because Daniel Craig was fairly unknown before he was Bond. So let's get somebody kind of unknown and make them a star. I'd rather them do that, to be honest. I'd rather them do that, and then I'd rather WBD to fucking call up Henry Cavill and be like, hey, you still got that cape in your closet? Can you put it back on for us, please? So, yeah. Hopefully that'll be the case, so I don't know. We'll see. Cavill for Bond? Yeah. Cavill for Bond, but then, like I said, you can kind of throw away the whole Cavill back for Superman thing. That'd be a little bit rough. That'd be a lot right there, so. But I would rather have them choose an unknown and make that person a star, or relatively unknown. Maybe they, you know, somebody that is relatively known. I don't know. Just turn somebody else into a star. That's what I wanted to see. Of course, I saw the North, North, Northman on uh, Thursday, so hopefully you caught my, uh, I mean, the face says it all right there, right? Um, yeah, I saw the Northman and uh, really enjoyed it. Robert Eggers is a crazy son of a bitch. I mean, he turned a very, you know, uh, a common story, a very, you know, a story that we've seen many times, and he kind of flipped it onto it like, hey, well, you haven't seen me do a story like this, and definitely did that. Holy shit. Hey, directors in their Batman I just love, I love how they're like smiling. Christopher Nolan and Bale are smiling. And then you got Pattinson and Reeves and they're like serious, serious hair game. That's right. And look at this. Speaking of the Batman revenues at IMAX climbed 55% to 60 million for, th for the three month period ending in April, which the company uh, attributed to uh, the popularity of the Batman. What? That's right. The popularity of the Batman. I'll say it again. The popularity of the Batman. That's right. So the Batman helped boost up IMAX sales, and I'm sure Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness is also going to bump it up a little bit more, too. So good. People are going back to the movies. Here's some Keanu Reeves love for you right there. Hey, things are looking bright, guys. Things are looking bright because in 2023, Ellen and James Corden no longer will be show host. <laughs> yeah. Good? Anybody? Yeah, I'm just saying. I think they're both dreadful. Um, well, I mean, Ellen, she has that reputation, which we all know why she's leaving. James Corden, I mean, he has his moments. The carpool karaoke thing was a good idea, and I thought that was, you know, it's, it's a cool concept. I I'll give him that. He's not completely terrible, but a lot of things that he does, I just don't find him that funny. But anyways, yeah, evil has been rectified. <laughs> And speaking of Henry Cavill, this is an awesome poster right here. You could save them all. No, you can't. Well, you can't save them all, but it's still a cool poster. Let's see. Keep on going. And yeah, man, look at this. I mean, dude, I just love. Your characters. Your characters. I, I love how Keanu Reeves. Look at how giddy he is. 
The man oh, just loves to make movies. John, John Wick. It's not about the money. It's not about the celebrityism. He's not going to be at the fucking Met Gala. He's just going to be showing up right here, and he's just so excited to talk about John Wick Chapter 4. But wait, we do some car stuff. We cars, got some yes. Horses. Cars are bad. Bites. Not really horses. A little bit of horses. <laughs> but we have cars. A lot of cars. Uh, motorcycle. A lot of, a lot of fighting. Jiu Jitsu, Judo, Gun Fu. Judo, Gun Fu. Oh, we got some surprises. Gun Fu, man. Yep. Got some surprises. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, just, just awesome to see Keanu Reeves all giddy about that with his director. It's good stuff. This is funny art right here. The Batman, <laughs> uh, of course, the infamous Robert Pattinson uh, meme that everybody uses. That picture of him wearing this kind of outfit. But yeah, somebody turned him into Batman. So I love that. Dog foo? No. Man, it could be some dog foo. Uh, let's see. And then we got, look at, look who's a fan of everything, everywhere, all at once. Mr. Andrew Garfield loves that movie because, look, he's rocking the hot dog finger gloves. Come on. You gotta love that. That's a nice shirt too, by the way. I like that. I like that shirt. But you got the. I want to get some of that. And yes, we lost. Uh, we lost an icon. Uh, the past few days, of course, we lost Neil Adams. We talked about it, of course, on the uh, the Vox stream. We talked about it on the Patreon stream. So, yeah, he died at the age of eighty. You know, at least he lived a pretty full life. So that's good right there. But yeah, Mr. Neil Adams, who uh, I mean, we talked about it on Batman the Fanimated also with uh, Scott. And uh, I mean, I mean, obviously, when it comes to Neil Adams and it comes to Batman, I mean, he helped kind of just like, hey, let's bring Batman back when it came to, into the 70s. And not to mention, you know, creating characters such as like Ra's al Ghul, Man Bat, you know, just kind of creating that whole story arc, especially with Ra the, the, uh, the Ghul family. So, yeah. So may he rest in peace, of course, Mr. Uh, Neil Adams. Uh, but I'm glad I'm mean, glad he lived a pretty full life right there. And then, of course, there was like a Marvel swap between the Marvels and Ant-Man and the Wasp. I really don't care. So I'm not going to talk about that. We're, instead, we're going to talk about um, we're going to talk about Harry Lennox talking about uh, Army of the Dead Lost Vegas. He gives us a little update, which is not really an update at all. You can only guess soon, soon. Zack Snyder has a thing for you. Uh, <laughs> right. you you're, you're in his animated series that I spoke about at the top of the, the, the show called The Army of the Dead. Right, right. Tell us about that. Well, it's uh, Army of the Dead is like a zombie apocalypse, you know, uh, miniseries. And it's got people like, you know, Joe Manganiello and uh, uh, Dave Manganiello. Some really cool people. Omari Hardwick, I think, is, is in it. But we, we are, it's an animated piece, but it's only, it's done as only Zack Snyder could do it. But yes, there's an army uh, that is, you know, fighting to save humanity if they can from some rather clever zombies. <laughs> so yeah, <it's, laughs> yeah. But it'll be a lot of fun. Zombies have gotten smart and clever, and cheese right. and crackers. Right. Crackers. <laughs> yeah. So that's cool. Always hear. It's always good to hear from Mr. Uh, Mr. Harry Lennox. That voice, man. That fucking voice. Ah, uh, all right. And then of course we have Batwoman was canceled, which we talked about. Um, and of course, Legends of Tomorrow was canceled too. Legends of Tomorrow had a good run, though. Let's face it, Batwoman. I don't think Batwoman stood a chance, especially after the whole Ruby Rose thing. And Legends had a good run. I watched probably the first two or three seasons of Legends. Maybe I'll finally finish that one. So I don't know. We'll see. And then brand new Harley Quinn photos. Release that fucking air cut. Come on, come on. Once again, shout out to uh, Alessandro Bartolazzi for sending these through. Apparently, uh, the makeup artist, he's like the makeup artist I'm, yeah, for, uh, for Suicide Squad, showing us a little bit more of Margot Robbie right here. I mean, I tell you. And, uh, you know, I will say this. I mean, I'm just, you know, with there's going <laughs> to things at Warner Brothers Discovery right now. I mean, we already heard about the Wonder Twins movie. It supposedly got canceled. Of course, that's not officially out in the trades yet. It's all just like, um, um, it's kind of just, uh, we don't know if that's all official yet. Uh, nobody wanted a Wonder Twins movie, but I mean, 
you make it uh, into some kind of teeny bopper thing, whatever the fuck, because that's who they, they cast, like, the dude from, Ar- the guy that plays Archie, right? And I'm not even sure who the girl, girl is from. But, yeah, it's like, it seems like uh, if that's all true, it's like Zaslav's going, all right, all right, all right, all right. Can we stop it with all this green light stuff? And then, you know, there's been a lot of rumors that are coming around. But from what I gathered and from what I, you know, I, at least with talking to uh, someone who more in the know than I am, I guess you could say, um, I mean, when it comes to the streaming service, we, there needs to be content. We've said it time and time and time again when we were talking about the Snyder Cut. So why not even just put the air cut on HBO Max to drive some more eyeballs to it? I mean, again, they got to take in so much. You got Margot Robbie and like, yeah, she's been Harley Quinn now, what, three times? So let's just see another version of the movie that she was in before. Let's Because there's no word on when she's going to be uh, Harley Quinn again. So why not just release another version of the movie that has her as Harley Quinn again? And then of course, Jared Leto being uh popular when it came to um, the fact that there was going to be the additional photography for Zack Snyder's justice league that like trended big time. So almost like a no brainer. And hopefully with everything that's happening and, and who knows how much more we're going to see of, of, uh, green lit stuff that's just gonna go nowhere and then other stuff's gonna get green lit i don't know it's all just pretty up in the air right now but hopefully they could see like hey how much money does this need all right fine let's do it it doesn't it's not gonna need as much money of course as Zack Snyder just but i'm like come on we want to see her again we want to see more of her and then we want to see more of that other dude right so but anyways new images new images of uh margot robbie harley quinn and then, of course, I got my release the Schumacher cut shirt, which they should also release that, too. That seems like a bigger no brainer because it's like, hey, how you, you just got to restore the footage and make sure everything sounds good and everything. And then put it out there. Release that Schumacher cut. But yes, I got my uh, Schumacher cut shirt right there, which is uh, it's awesome. I like it. I like it a lot. Oh, uh, yeah. And then there's that. Did you guys see this? Apparently, Kung Fu Hustle 2. It's coming out. I just, just I, a lot of people were like, wait a minute, this is true? What's going on? Wesley Chu right here was like, hell yeah, one of the uh, most, uh, I don't even know, Wuxia? Is that how you say that? I don't even know. Uh, movies ever made is getting a sequel. So apparently Kung Fu Hustle is getting a sequel. And if you haven't watched the first one, do yourself a favor, you know, if you want to like, you know, smoke something or get a drink and just watch Kung Fu Hustle. It is insanity, but it's so fucking good. I haven't watched it in a bit. I'm going to have to watch it again. Uh, but that's pretty exciting that it's finally getting a sequel. That movie came out, what, like over a decade ago, right? So, yeah. Uh, Mikey Sutton is your god. <laughs> yeah, I think some people uh, think of him as a god. A prophet. That's what they think of him as. He's a prophet. Ugh, don't, uh, don't depend on scoopers, please. And then, uh, me and Jordan were, uh, you know, Mr. Chainsaw Reacts, we, uh, we were talking about, he told me that in the, in, in, in Flash, they actually, you know, Flash actually rides the lightning, and they played Ride the Lightning, you know? So, eh, okay, I can't play anymore, can't play anymore, because copyright, but yes, apparently, yeah, there's the clip right there, I was like, wow, they actually had... The Flash, Ride the Lightning, and they played Ride the Lightning. Well, that's just great. I love that. Absolutely love that. Anyways, uh, and then moving along, we got uh, Ozark star Alfonso Hirara. I can't even say his name. Discusses the shock, the shocking premiere and uh, teases Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon. So obviously uh, Ozark is ending which I'm going to finally catch up on that. I watched the first season. But then he talked about Zack Snyder in Rebel Moon. He's going to be in Rebel Moon. He says, Zack Snyder is a director that has revolutionized cinema. He has created important projects for the industry and the world. I mean, who hasn't seen Zack Snyder's films? He hasn't been excited to go to the movies to see... uh, Who hasn't been excited to go to the movies to see a Zack Snyder film? He's a cultural reference in many ways, so I'm very excited to share a set with him and to work with him and with his team. So just another actor praising the absolute shit out of Zack Snyder. It's almost like he's just a really cool dude and good guy. We all knew that. We love that, and we want some more Rebel Moon crumbs, please. 
And then over the weekend, Everything Everywhere All at Once uh, is an indie phenomenon right here, according to Mr. Fernando right here. On the sixth Friday, the beloved film grossed $1.6 million domestic, exactly the same it grossed last Friday. So it had a 0% drop. That's pretty awesome. From Friday to Friday, it had a 0% drop. That's freaking amazing. But of course, you know, it's 1.6, but whatever. It's still pretty good. So uh, it's got three, uh, 31.5 million worldwide right there. So, hey, good. Glad you guys, please go out there and support that movie. That's what we need. We need these indie movies to get supported, these original ideas. And then we got some behind-the-scenes feature right here of them shooting the... Uh, the, of course, the funeral scene, which is just uh, amazing and awesome and just awesome and perfect and whatever. And just God damn it. I love that scene. It's a great scene. And then check it out. Red and Kitty are back. Red and Kitty. That 90s show. Coming back at you. There they are. Aw. I mean, who didn't? I mean, I, I love that 70s show. I mean, obviously, like the last season or the last two seasons, I, you know, you just want to ignore those because, you know, things, people left and yeah, it wasn't that great. But hey, we got that 90s show coming out. They're filming it. And apparently uh, deals have been made for the entire cast. Minus Hyde is coming back. Yes, Hyde will not be coming back. I'm sure they'll have a reason. There's many reasons why Hyde wouldn't be coming back. I mean, obviously, uh, Mr. Masterson dealing with an issue that he's been dealing with for the past few years. So, yeah, he definitely won't be coming back, but everybody else is going to be coming back for that 90s show. So this is cool. Yes, this is a recent pick. Uh, Mr. Kurtwood uh, Smith, he tweeted this out. He tweeted this out over the weekend, showing that uh, same Red and Kitty, different decade, that 90s show. Love it. Love it. Can't wait to see it. And then if you ever, you know what, I might just watch this video of Keanu Reeves if I'm having a bad day and I'm like, you know, I wake up in a shitty mood, I'm just going to watch this video of Keanu Reeves. A nice thing to the people of the internet. Yes. Wow. Hello. Hello. Hope you're well. <laughs> a nice thing there you to go. The the That's all you need. That's yes. all you need right there. You're having a bad Hello. day, just watch that. Hope Hello. you're well. There's a treasure. There's a treasure right there, man. So that's good. I like that. And then, yes, over the weekend, uh, I was yet again accused of uh, being paid by Warner Brothers. Yeah, some idiot right there that has I stand with Ray Fisher in his uh, in his um, Twitter handle. Yeah, he was accusing me of, you know, being paid by Warner Brothers and the same old, same old stuff. It's just funny. I was feeling a little sassy on Saturday, so I engaged on it. And, uh, you know, I kind of talked about it on the, uh, the whatchamacallit, uh, the Patreon stream a little bit. But yeah, so I just kind of, it's pretty interesting. But you know, it's just, I'm, I'm still waiting for that back pay. I mean, where are my checks that are supposed to be signed by Walter Hamada and Jeff Johns? I'm still waiting for those. I mean, I don't know. I mean, when, when is it going to happen? Apparently, you know, some of the other guys, they've already, they, their, their checks have already gone through, but mine haven't gone through yet. What the fuck, man? I tell you what, it's like, what the hell? So, yeah. That's what it is. I mean, geez. And then we got the Top Gun Maverick press tour is uh, kicked off right here. Well, that looks pretty cool. I'm sure they'll have fun with that. And, of course, we'll talk about that and everything. And, uh, yeah, respect, mad respect to uh, Mr. Clayton Kershaw, man, for uh, becoming the uh, strikeout leader for the Dodgers. Okay? As a Giants fan, you know, I could put put the rivalry down and be like, hey, Awesome, sir. You know, he's, you know, Kershaw struggled the last couple of years, but he's looking pretty good this year. That's for damn sure. So looking healthier, looking good. So hopefully he does stay healthy, but still go Giants. Anyways, so, and then this, <laughs> this right here. Oh man, the, the drink just goes flying splash. Oh, that sucks. He didn't even get the ball. He didn't even get the ball. He went for it. And then just, oh, no, splash. And she's holding like a tray of nachos. Oh, so now the nachos are ruined too, man. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> Anyways, and then, of course, we have a concept. Somebody made a concept of, you know, a lot of people are hoping that there's going to be Mr. Freeze in the Batman 2. This is a pretty cool poster right there. Look at that ass. Look at that ass. 
That is an ass of the Batmobile. God damn, that's sexy. Sexy, sexy. Um, yeah, there's that. I don't know if I should be showing that, to be honest, but uh, so I won't show it. Um, we got some Black Adam uh, Funko Pops that are going to be coming out. Can't wait for those. Uh, and this, I thought this was funny right here. How do I detonate? <laughs> how do I detonate a nuclear bomb without killing the crew? You know, Christopher Nolan, of course, making the Oppenheimer movie. I thought this was a funny meme because it's like, yeah, is he really gonna? Everybody jokes like because he used practical effects as much as possible. So Christopher Nolan's gonna like, you know, detonate a nuclear bomb. It's good stuff. And speaking of Oppenheimer, there's Florence Pew 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 on the set of Oppenheimer. Yep. That's good. Of course, we'll be talking about Jay Oliva. Jay Oliva. And we got all this. Hey, here's a shot of uh, Edward Norton, David Fincher, and, of course, Brad Pitt on the set of Fight Club right here, grabbing their crotches, because why not? Why not? Jay Oliva. Got some cool stuff right there. This is an up-close shot of the bat signal and the Batman. That's pretty cool. And then look at this right here. Chinese authorities asked Sony to remove the Statue of Liberty from Spider-Man No Way Home if they wanted to release the film in China. The film was never released in China. So kudos again to Disney for not giving in to the, to the Chinese overlords. China, see? They don't even like, they don't like the Statue of Liberty. I mean, come on. She just stands proud. She's got the torch. She welcome. Bring us your poor. Bring us to everybody. Come on. But I'm going to put you to work, okay? You better be legal. Now, um, yeah, so obviously we were talking about how Doctor Strange, the Multiverse of Madness, uh, Egypt, Saudi Arabia didn't like the fact that there's like a 12-second reference to two moms. And uh, when it comes to China, I mean, this, it's just the, it sucks because the Chinese people are probably, you know, they, they wanted to see the movie. They wanted to see the movie, but of course the government and whatever, you know, the the, the people who run China are like, nope, we don't like you. We don't like that whole Statue of Liberty stuff. So they wanted Marvel to remove the Statue of Liberty. What? Okay. Interesting. I don't know. But yeah. So good on Disney and Marvel Studios for being like, no, we're not going to do anything with that. Sorry. I mean, the movie still almost made $2 billion. Not quite. But yeah. So, man, I tell you what. It's just like, come on. Like, what is happening here? What is going on? But, you know, but then, of course, you have, like, these celebrities that bow down to China, you know, looking at you, John Cena. Jesus Christ. Anyways, uh, of course, we'll talk about that and that and that and that. And then, hey, look at this. Mr. Nicotina right here. Here's a little. They uh, posted the preview for Project Comic Con right here. Got to mute the music because, you know, it is. I think it is, you know, a little copyrighted, but it's. But if you guys saw this, uh, Nicotina posted this on the Ford Nerds Network channel right here, what they've been working on when it comes to the uh, Project Project Justice League right here. Basically bringing, yes, bringing the storyboards to life right here. Okay? We're all forgetting what happened last year, and now this is a whole new thing and a whole, look at that. That looks great. Looks great. Absolutely looks fantastic. So. Got voices going on and everything like that. Lois so. Lane. Lois Lane. There's Lois. Is that Lois? Yeah. So, got some shots right there. And then, of course, like uh, the descriptions on the storyboard and everything. So, and then even some John Stewart right there showing up. So, that's going to be good. Decide. So, it's a good shot right there. So, and then, of course, Mr. Darkseid. So, Project Justice League. There you go. See? That's how you, you know, I mean, as of right now, as we're waiting to see what happens in the future, you got to love it when people just kind of come together and create something themselves. That's what it's all about. Instead of just, you know, beating the keyboard and accusing people of saying this, that, and this, it's like actually do something. You know, there's that loud sanction of the fucking fandom that literally just like all they want to do is just call out people for shit. But then you got people that are creating stuff. And doing other things, you know, and charity events and everything. And, yes, if you actually go, if you actually click the link right here, too, and go to uh, go to the actual link on YouTube, you can donate. You could donate right here. They got the fundraiser going right here, the AFSP fundraiser right there. So 
Donate if you can. Oh, it's for a good cause. It's for a good cause. Of course, we'll talk about that. Oh, my God. Did you guys see this shit? Did you guys see this shit? My God, did you see this? So, (laughs) apparently at one point, guys, Warner Brothers reportedly considered Drake to play DC Cyborg. Drake! I mean, I guess it makes sense because... Every time all his songs, he sounds like a fucking robot. So I guess that makes sense, which I don't understand. Why do people like that? Okay. You realize when they do the auto tune things, it's because the actual artist cannot sing. Anyways, so there's concept art of Drake as Cyborg. What is this? No. Ugh. This is from uh, character and creature designer Jared Kretschewski. I uh, can't say his name. He went on Instagram to share this image of Drake in the role of a cyborg. And he noted that this was a piece of concept art meant for a show that never came to fruition, mentioning that Warner Brothers wanted to cast Drake. Cyborg concept for a series that didn't happen. They wanted to cast Drake. So, yeah, Warner Brothers wanted this at one point. Yeah. Uh, I, I was. I, what? What? <laughs> what do I got against auto tune? It's not great. It hides the fact that the person can't sing. I'm sorry, Rosemary. If you want to stand with Drake, go for it. <sighs> it's just like wow. At one point, they wanted Drake. Now this was probably way before. You know, this is probably before Ray Fisher got cast and everything. So I'm pretty sure that this wasn't anything recent. But, uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty crazy stuff right there. I mean, ugh, huh. no thank you. No thank you. That's fine. And then, by the way, did you guys see uh, the, the new trailer for, uh, you know, Don't Worry? Don't Worry, darling. Um, it's Florence Pew, 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 Pew. And then um, that one dude, Harry Styles, uh, directed by Olivia Wilde. Yeah, apparently there's like a whole, uh, you know, yeah. She gets uh, propped up onto the uh, the table right there after a nice dinner. And, uh, well, you could see that she's enjoying dessert. Or he is. I don't know. Both of them are enjoying some dessert right there. So, yeah. Pretty intense. And then it's pretty cool uh, art right here, of course, with Battinson. And then we got uh, some cartoon art. Lair, uh, Lyle Cruz's art style right here for all that. It, it keeps going, too. They have some for, you know... Michael Keaton's Batman, Batman, Batman Returns, Batman Begins, and then The Dark Knight, which is cool. Like that style. And then look at this. We got the uh, we got Star Lord rocking. Uh, well, apparently a very uh, comic uh, book friendly um, uh, source material costume right there. Apparently that's what the Guardians of the Galaxy are going to be. Really, I mean James Gunn's like, well, this is the last one I'm going to do, so I might as well have a costume that's legit to the comics. So that's cool. That's cool. DJN, thank you for the uh thank you for the $2 super chat. Well, they got common for Tattoo Man, so true, but that's not Cyborg. Uh, and then this is going to be great. Um on HBO Max on May 20th, a two-part documentary about George Carlin, called George Carlin's American the dream right here from Judd Apatow. Cannot wait for this because George Carlin is my all-time favorite comedian. Uh, love the guy. Never gets old. I love just revisiting his old bits. The man was just, uh, he was the best. He was the absolute best. And there's going to be a whole documentary on him coming to HBO Max on May 20th. So that is, I'm definitely watching that. Definitely watching that. And look at this guy. This guy knows. <laughs> Where do people find time and I don't know how that's just fucking awesome You gotta love nerds nerds with money nerds with fucking money Jesus And then there's a trailer right there for the uh, documentary right there So yeah, I can't wait for that can't wait for that George Carlin was the I mean that's the definition of a goat right there Uh, Definition of a goat same with Doyle Doyle Brunson. He was the goat of poker and apparently, uh, Radar Pictures is developing a Doyle Bronson biopic, The Godfather of Poker. I was uh, into poker um, before, so. Oops. So, yeah, I uh, definitely will be watching that. Shh, 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 shh. Okay, so, got to change that. Anyways, those are the tweets right there. 
Now let's talk about the main thing. You didn't miss anything. Don't worry. We're getting to the Jay Oliva stuff now, okay? Jose, you're good. So let's go through and uh, see what Jay Oliva was uh, giving us over the weekend, or as we like to call him, Slay Oliva. That's right. Slay Oliva. All right. Where are we at right here? Okay. Here we go. This is what we got right here. Okay, so Jay Oliva yesterday decided to be like, you know what? I'm just going to take my little gallery of storyboards and I'm just going to put them out there on Twitter. And a lot of us just thought nothing of it because he started off he started off a little small. You know, it's like, hey, Dark Knight, Dark Knight Return storyboard right here, which looks cool. We got a dirty Batman right there looking all huge and grizzled. And we got the mutants right there. Those guys. Uh, and then, then all of a sudden he was like, all right, well, how about a Man of Steel storyboard frame right here? And then, of course, we got Superman right there. And we got the, uh, obviously, the, uh, the, mach- uh, the whatchamacallit machines where, yeah, where the tentacles come out and uh, start fighting Superman. Because, you know, you can't just have Superman destroy, you know. You can't just have him just destroy the machines. You got to challenge him a little bit. So, so good. So good right there. And then we got a Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman storyboard right here where, man, look at that. It looks pretty gruesome. Yeah, we got, of course, uh, Steve Trevor, Wonder Woman right here. Uh, I'm guess- I mean, obviously, this is the scene where they're on the beach. Yeah, it kind of this doesn't seem like at first you're like, what the hell scene is this? But obviously, it's the scene where they storm, you know, where they're on Themyscira and they have that whole battle on that beach right there. So that's what that was. And then we got a frame right here, a storyboard from, uh, this is a beautiful one. I just love this one because there's just so much happening right here. And, of course, it's a Batman storyboard. Storyboard, of course, from BBS when Batman's on the ladder. I mean, I love it when people were posting GIFs right here of what the scene was. Yeah, so a lot of people would respond in posting a GIF of uh, of uh, what was happening in the storyboard. But it's cool to see that, you know, it was once just, I mean, Zach probably wrote his version of a storyboard and then Jay Oliva went and wrote and drew his version of a storyboard. You know, that's what's so cool about that, the whole process of it. Of course, you see the LexCorp thing right there. Awesome, like that. And then there's the man. There's the man, the dark side. And I love the fact that he said Zack Snyder Justice League storyboard, okay? Zack Snyder Justice League. Gotta love that. ZSJL. But yeah, there's Dark Side right there with those red eyes. Now, see, I mean, like, that's what's cool. It's like, but obviously, when it came to the design of Dark Side, it was slightly different than this. Slightly different. I mean, we, you know, but it wasn't like drastically different. But, you know, it's always just, you have like a concept and then you just, it just evolves and evolves and evolves, which is always so great. <laughs> So I just love that shot. It's just so evil looking. So fucking evil looking. And then he even uh, posted one for Deadpool. I forgot that he worked on that. So, yeah. So he's got a Deadpool storyboard right here, too. So that's cool. Can't wait for the third one, please. And love again. And then, of course, he had one for Thor Ragnarok, which, you know, not a big fan of Thor Ragnarok. Definitely not. But I was like, but I did not know that he actually worked on Thor Ragnarok. So this was actually a little bit of a surprise right here. It's like, oh. He did some storyboarding for Thor Ragnarok. Well, that's cool. Good for him. I mean, he's got range. I mean, he's mainly a DC dude, but he's also done work for Marvel. So that's cool. I like that. I forget that. It's like, yeah, he's not just a DC guy. So, you know, and then look at this shot. Yeah, that's right. Look at that. Batman right there from, of course, Zack Snyder's Justice League right before um, uh, before it all, you know, goes to shit. You know, Oh, no, you know looking down and seeing uh, that the unity is about to happen. So that's a pretty, pretty cool shot right there. Anything Batman, uh, sign me up for that. And then you got right here, of course, the first showdown. The Batmobile smashed up, and we all remember that shot. Remember when we saw that shot first in the trailer, and we just like, oh, my God. First showdown between Batman and Superman and BBS. Ah, it's good stuff, see? And then, of course, you know, people showing, yeah, there's the shot right there. Love it. Love it. And then, of course, we got the uh, the Batmobile. Uh, the Batmobile, when it runs into, yeah. See, people just, like, know exactly what we're talking about right there. So that's cool. But, yeah, I just love that. It's like, but it could, because I love how it's just, like, it's so, like, you just so freehand. It's like, all right, we got to do this, got to do that. It's like, I wonder how, I want to see, like, Jay Leva just to, like, full on, 
do like a video. Maybe he has where he just draws up these uh, the storyboards, you know, in real time kind of thing. Then we got another Man of Steel one right here. Which of course, we've seen that right there. Yeah. When what's his name is like jumping onto the uh, on the jets right there in Man of Steel. And then, of course, we all know what this one. See, this is like the more detailed storyboards where you actually added color and just like, I mean, this I would I would I want this on my fucking wall right here. I mean, I want it on the wall. I mean, look at how beautiful that looks. And then Zach's like, oh, yep, we're going to do exactly that. Zach and DJ and all those guys were like, yep, we got it. Fucking art, man. That is just that's you do one of these. Yeah. Chef kiss. Yes. That's what that is right there. Gorgeous. And then we got, uh, yep, then we got um, Superman, of course, saving Lois right here. This is uh, right before, uh, see, we got this uh, the shot right here. Oh, trying to bring it up. See this shot right there that Cap, that Cap responded to. Um, it won't bring up gifts like it does pictures, damn it. But, uh, yeah, that's where he pulls her out of the ship before it's going to crash. And then this is like the landing of that right there. This shot right here. Look at that. Just got to love it. Good. And then, of course, we've got another really detailed shot right here. This is a cool shot. I mean, my God. See, another, another just add the color, add everything, even like the emotion on the face, the shadow, the blur, the everything, man. Yeah, Superman just like, all right, time to kick your ass, Zod. It's time to kick your ass. Ugh. Does good art. Does good art. Then another Deadpool shot. Which this has color in it too, just like the other Deadpool shot. I like it. And this is I I'm guessing towards the end of it, right? That's my guess. Is like the uh, the final battle right there, so that's cool. And then of course Francis. Yeah. So remember when uh Deadpool like you know put all the body <laughs> put all the bodies to spell out Francis? Yeah. That's cool. I like that. And then this part right here, he actually put Hugh Jackman's face, <laughs> you know, when when she unmasks him and then he has Hugh Jackman's like cut out over his face. So that's cool. The, the fact that that's actually on the storyboard, that made me laugh, made me laugh. And then, of course, the mic drop, the one that got the most retweets, quote tweets, likes. I mean, if you go through and you see. The engagement to all these storyboards, yeah, they all did fairly well, but this one, this one right here, and of course, you know, we've talked about it on, uh, you know, over the weekend and stuff, and I did a little short video about it, but man, nobody saw this coming, you know, I was just, I remember it was just, I was talking to people about the storyboards and whatnot, and I was kind of going, yeah, it'd be cool if he like showed something that was deleted or that never got filmed, you know, or something like that. It would I, I, I thought like, man, it would be cool if like Oliva just like decided just let me just drop something that's never been seen before. Little did I think he was going to drop a storyboard from Ben Affleck's Batman. What? Insane. Jeez. And the fact, the detail. I mean, he, there's no color in it, but the fact that there's the reflection, the reflection on the sword. Ah, again, again. So I don't know if that's the final battle. Was this supposed to be the final battle between them two or their first face to face or, you know, um, mask to mask, whatever you want to call it. But man, it's just it's just so freaking beautiful, man. So. I haven't seen Joe Manganiello. I don't know if he's uh, seen this yet. Hopefully he does, because I think once he catches wind of it, he's going to retweet it. He's going to post it on Instagram, do all that stuff, hopefully. So I hope he does. But, man, I'll tell you what. I mean, what we heard about this movie, it was going to be pretty epic, pretty epic showdown between them and Batgirl showing up. God knows whoever else was going to show up. But, yeah, it was definitely going to be something. So I'm just kind of wondering, is Jay Oliva going to post more? And I say, please, please, sir, we'd like some more. I know you said hashtag internet not ready. No, we're, we're ready. We're fucking ready. What else do you got? I mean, why not? But see, I mean, but it also begs the question, too, is like that I've even said on the people is like if it just so happens that now I'm just going to talk specifically just about. Ben Affleck's Batman. If Ben truly is like, 
not going to do it. You know, I'm just, I'm not with it anymore. I'll come back as Batman as cameos, but doing a full on Batman movie. Cause you know, he has said that he's kind of done doing that whole thing, being away from his kids and whatnot and everything like that. But what if, what if there's just this Batman movie that his Batman movie gets turned into an animated series or whatever the hell with Jay Oliva at the helm directing it. And you have Ben Affleck, Joe Mang, Jer- uh, Jeremy Irons. You have everybody coming back as the voices. And then, you know, if we can't get the live action, there's not, I mean, why not? Why not just do something with animation? Make it a series or something like that. I mean, that's the thing, you know. If Ben is truly like, nah, I'm not going to do, you know, these big, huge IP movies anymore. If anything, I'll just, yeah, I'll leave it open to come back and just, like, make a little cameo. You need me to come back? Sure, I'll do that. But the fact that it's like there was, like, so much that he was going to be doing for a Batman movie where literally it was probably Matt Damon that said, if you make this movie, it will kill you. Which that's just wow. When he said when that, that was revealed, when he when it was said that uh, that uh, that when he that he when he gave his script to a friend, and I'm assuming Matt Damon, and uh, that person was like, "If you make this, it will kill you." That was like, whoa. I mean, jeez. I mean, that's the thing. It's all up to the man. It's what I've always said. It's all up to the man himself. If he gets to a point where he feels like he could do it, and he, and he wanted to do a live action, which I heard. You know, it was up in the air for a little bit when it came to HBO Max, and I've told you guys that, but, you know, but at the same time, I'm like, all right. But then again, it's like, what's just, if that's not going to happen, just take the story, Jay Oliva, animation, bring, you know, Joe Mang and, and Ben Affleck doing the voices, I'd be okay with that. I'd be okay with that. Yeah. I know that's controversial, and it gets spun into, oh, yeah, 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 yeah you, want, you want this, you want that, you don't want the live action stuff. You know, it's like, yes, yes, I don't, because I'm getting paid by Warner Brothers to promote a, an animation movie. I don't know. Animated movie. Jesus Christ. They'll probably clip this out right here when I say that. They probably because they do. They'll, that's what's so funny is like they'll watch my videos to clip out things and then see what he says. And then they'll take things out of context. You got to love that. You got to love that. It's like instead of actually creating something like what people are doing, like Andre, like Eric working on like an actual like, you know, some art in a, like sequels, like spinoff stuff, you know, about about Zack Snyder, the Snyder verse. These guys are just like, see, they're like taking the time to clip out stuff and see this person's against you know, this, that and this. It's like, shut up. I'm just I'm like, all I'm doing is listening. Listening to the people involved. Ben Affleck said that he wasn't down to do the IPs anymore. So I was like, okay. So, but what if Jay Oliva was like, hey, let's do your Batman movie animation style. And, you know, Warner Brothers was okay with that. I'm thinking, I'm like, if we can't get your movie live action, which I desperately want. But if we get an animation, I'll be okay with that too, man. Be okay with that. Okay with that as I rub my chest. I'm just rubbing the bat. The fat bat. It's all right. Go ahead, clip it out and say I'm a Snyder hater or something like that. I don't know. Anyways, all right, Vin Diesel. <laughs> Man, this is going to be a long show, um, which is fine. Um, so now more details have come out. I mean, obviously you guys know that Mr. Justin Lin walked, walked away after a week of shooting of Fast X, Fast and Furious 10. So now more details are coming out and like, you know, that's what, the you know, the whole opening of uh, the show was all about when it came to that. But, yeah, some new information has uh, has come about and we all knew that something happened and we all knew that it had to do with Vin Diesel. At least some of it had to do with Vin Diesel, if not all of it. And we saw the video where it looked literally like Justin Lin was being held hostage by Vin Diesel. Felt like that, right? So now we got this behind the scene, behind the behind Justin Lin's Fast 10 breaking point, a Saturday to remember. It started as a talk about notes with franchise star and fellow producer Vin Diesel escalated into a major disagreement and ended with a slam door. Justin finally had enough and said, this movie is not worth my mental health. Wow. Families come in all shapes and sizes. Yeah, it's all about family, right, Vin? Huh? Fuck off. I, you know he's... Ugh. 
It was all about family. You would have stopped after Paul Walker passed. Okay? That guy was your brother. You should have, in respect for him, just been like, all right, we're just going to close the book on Fast and Furious right now because we lost the other half. The better half, in my opinion. Ugh. Let's see. So Lynn was handling writing duties on the movie and believed he had a locked script going into it. Universal and Diesel had other thoughts. A key location that had been secured was cut due to its Eastern Europe location amid the war in Ukraine. And the movie still hadn't cast one of its villains yet. What? So they started filming and they still didn't have a villain? Or is this before Jason Momoa got cast maybe? I don't know. On top of that, even as Lynn tried to draw lines in the sand, the studio said it would be sending uh, it would be sending to London a writer to polish dialogue for some of the actors, a uh, move that was expected but apparently not welcomed by Lynn at the time. Sources say the constantly moving target proved to be much for seasoned Lynn, who on April 23rd had a major disagreement with Diesel. The four-person meeting had begun with Diesel having new notes. It ended with a slam door. Justin finally had enough and said, this movie is not worth my mental health, says one source. Both Lynn and Diesel declined comment for this story. Good for Lynn! Good for Lynn! Okay, we've heard this story before. Studio and egos and whatever the fuck. Putting pressure on the fucking director. You know, we've heard the story. And the fact that he was like, you know what? Fuck this movie. And apparently he was going to be paid like 10 to 20 million dollars. He he decided to walk away from 10 to 20 million dollars. That's how much he was like, this is not worth it. Okay, this is not worth it. And that's why I was like, Justin Lin, now go make a passion project, please. Do something for your mental health, something that, that, that you're passionate about, a subject that you're passionate about. Do a passion project. That's what I hope he does. A Universal spokesman, spokesperson told THR, any creative differences leading to Justin Lin's exit were with the studio, not the fellow producers, cast, or crew. Yeah, okay. Not the producer, not Mr. Baldy Pants, who is shorter than he actually um, shows himself on screen. In the heat of the moment, Lynn said he was through with the movie. The studio took him seriously, and by April 25th, a settlement was reached for Lynn to exit the production. He would remain involved as a producer. A great many of crew had worked on F9 with Lynn, and for a spell wondered uh, what their next moves should be. But Lynn, according to insiders, gave his blessing that they should stay on regardless the muscle car had lost its driver and is uh, speeding down the highway. So April 26th, April 26th, three days after the blow up, Lynn announced his departure, blah, 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 with the support, blah, blah, blah. We heard that Lynn's departure was months in the making and offers a glimpse into the kind of high pressure cooker environment that the movie series now almost 20 years old has become. It also illustrates how high the stakes are for its studio, Universal Pictures, its key star and producer, Diesel, and any director caught in the Sturm und Drang, whatever the fuck. Yeah. So, yeah, just all all that stuff, blah, 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 blah. And, uh, of course, we got the uh, the new director, what's his name, the guy who did, like, Transporter movies, all that stuff. Here we go. So, yeah, we got Mr. Uh, Lewis Lerderer. Lerderer. <laughs> uh, he is now in the driver's seat. Good luck. Good luck to you, sir. I mean, this guy, it's going to be Vin Diesel directing the rest of this movie. You know that, right? It's going to be a studio and Vin Diesel movie. Mr. Lewis right here, he's just going to be the the name, the guy in the chair that's going to yell action and cut. But is he going to have any input on anything that happens in this movie? I don't know. This is it's just a disaster. I mean, it's just ugh, it's dumb. It's gross. Again, I was over this fucking franchise when Paul Walker died because I liked his character more than I liked the Dom, the Dom Toretto character. But they were good yin and yang. They were good, you know, pairing and stuff. And I liked where they took the franchise. But I wanted them to go back to like a smaller movie. But yeah, so there you go. There's all that shit, all that bullshit. Vin Diesel, man. I mean, the guy can't. I mean, they they also talked about. I mean, there was also like an insider that said. The same thing that we've heard even Dwayne Johnson say, that's why it's all funny, is the fact that 
Vin Diesel would show up to the set late. He would show up and not know his lines. And then he said he would show up out of shape, like he wasn't in shape. And, you know, it's kind of funny because everybody always knows Vin Diesel has to be like, you know, but we've seen some pictures in between movies where he's just like, I don't give a fuck. And he's got a gut and he's got saggy man boobies and he's just like, whatever. And we've heard that he likes to just fuck around on set. He likes to ride around on a scooter and blah, blah, blah. So there's also that too. So there's also the pressures of getting this movie and you're trying to you have a schedule to keep and your main star is fucking late all the time. That's ridiculous. Ridiculous. And Dwayne Johnson said that shit. He absolutely said, I'm wondering if he's going to comment about this. That's what I'm wondering. I'm wondering if Dwayne Johnson's going to take to a video or something on Instagram and kind of throw a little shade. You know, raise an eyebrow, raise an eyebrow. I hope he does. I hope he does. Because, you know, Dwayne Johnson don't need it. I don't need it. Got Black Adam coming out. Why not? That's going to be interesting. Uh, so there you go. TMI. What do you mean? TMI. What TMI? I don't know what you're talking about, man. And now we got Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. Week three. I'm going to be brief about this because it's like, I know we've been talking about this uh, big time and, you know, there's still people that are on this side or that side. And, you know, I try not to take sides. Obviously, when it comes to all this, it's very much looking like Johnny Depp is looking like the better person. It does. And, uh, you know, we talked about it last night on the Patreon stream, too. Um, but, you know, it's it's Hollywood, man. It's fucking Hollywood. But. You know, there's some interesting things that have happened. I mean, first off, we knew that this was going to happen. Amber Heard hires new PR team as Johnny Depp wraps up a case. Yes, she parted ways <laughs> from her PR team because she was not looking good at all. Yeah, she and the lawyer, same thing, all this kind of stuff. Uh, so a lot of things. And apparently, apparently this whole thing has been huge on TikTok. Jesus. People have been getting all their updates on TikTok. There's been some funny videos and some funny supercuts of stuff that's been happening and things that have been asked and everything. But I mean, it's still just a literal shit show. And then, of course, when it came to the whole uh, and then there's this whole thing that came out today um, about that piece that this is all about. The uh, ACLU says it wrote Amber Heard's domestic violence op ed and timed it to her film release. Huh? The group also testified that Heard was only pay, has only paid them half the money she promised from her divorce settlement with Johnny Depp. On day 11, uh, the American Civil Liberties Union revealed a damning testimony that Amber Heard has given just $1.3 million to the organization after promising in 2016 to give $3.5 million of her divorce settlement to the organization and her ex, Elon Musk, which, wow, where's that guy been? Has that guy been in the news? He's kind of been keeping a low profile, Elon Musk. Has he, uh, what's Elon up to nowadays? I don't fucking know. Anyways, um, uh, nearly half, uh, yeah, donated nearly half the money. Worse yet, ACLU staffers actually ghost wrote the Washington Post op-ed at the center of the trial in which Heard claimed to be a survivor of domestic violence, and they pitched it on her behalf, timed to the release of Heard's then-upcoming film, Aquaman. And it gives all the stuff right here. Communication strategist ACLU wrote the first draft, gives the details, all that stuff. I mean, there's just... We'll see what happens this week because, I mean... Her side definitely has some work to do, and I'm sure there's going to be some damning evidence that comes out against Johnny Depp. And you got to just take it in and be like, OK, take it on. You know, don't be biased. That's what we always try to say. Don't take a side. And I've tried to not take a side, but it's hard to like, you know, when you hear all the stuff that's been happening and you hear stuff like this, you just kind of go like, oh, it's bad. It's bad, man. It's bad. And then, of course, hearing the, the report over the weekend, which I did a short video about, which is the fact that Amber Heard's screen time is supposed to be less than 10 minutes in Aquaman 2. And I was always wondering, and I kept saying last week, I'm sure she's going to have a pretty short screen time. It's just why would they want to have her in the movie, especially if the movie's specifically about the brothers reuniting. It's about brothers, which is fine. I don't need a love story in every goddamn superhero movie, okay? We don't need that. Okay. In some cases, yes, you're always going to have 
that with Superman and Lois. You always need that. You always need that aspect because that's just, that's part of it. But there's just certain, it's like, okay, yeah, we already established that. Let's just move on and, yeah, we'll team up with brother and, you know, let's hug and make up and take on Black Manta. So, but we'll see what happens this week. Uh, uh, you know, as much as I'm kind of tired of talking about it, it is fresh in the news and still got to talk about it, right? You know, we'll see what happens when it comes to her doing her testimony, stuff like that. It's just, man, she's got some work to do. That's for damn sure. Jesus Christ. Ah, and then finally, Fantastic Four. Not fan four stick. Um, but Fantastic Four. Uh, John Watts, of course, walked away. We all saw this. And, but this is the uh, the quote right here. <laughs> From Mr. John Watts on Departing Fantastic Four, making three Spider-Man films was an incredible and life-changing experience for me. I'm I'm eternally grateful to have been a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe for seven years. I'm hopeful we'll work together again, and I can't wait to see the amazing vision for Fantastic Four brought to life. Okay? So when this, when, when news broke that, he walked, of course, naturally. Everybody's like, what the fuck? I mean, this is kind of funny. It's the same fucking week that Justin Lin decides to walk. Um, but this is, of course, a little bit different. I mean, I'm sure John Watts had his struggles and had his big time stress, when, especially when it came to Spider-Man No Way Home. I can only imagine the stress and just getting phone calls time and time again about this and changing that. Because, I mean, even though Spider-Man No Way Home was such a pleasant and 10, 20 years of Spider-Man cinematic history wrapped up into one that had to be just like grueling. It just had to be grueling, but I'm sure there was some great moments, like a lot of great moments. And we've seen that in the behind the scenes, but the man is tired. Seven years, three, he did a Spider-Man trilogy. Okay. Spider-Man trilogy. And now you're going to try to revamp fantastic four. I do not blame the guy for wanting to just be like, no, I can't. I can't. That's so much pressure. So much pressure. And we talked about this on the Vox stream and you in the Patreon stream. You know, it's all very interesting. And uh, and uh, stop. Don't even mention anything that's happening uh, when it comes to leaks. Don't do not do it. But, uh, you know, um, you know, some names have been thrown out there of directors who might take over. I mean, I think Peyton Reed, people say that Peyton Reed. I don't think Peyton Reed should take over. Get somebody new. Get somebody fresh. Get somebody with, a, you know, with a unique taste. I mean, it would be nice if you got somebody that actually had a distinct style, like a directing style to do Fantastic Four. I mean, I think Josh Trank tried that, and it just didn't work, and it, you know, some of it had to do with Fox, you know. Because I always say, when it comes to Fan Four Stick, I'm always like, there was a good movie in there somewhere. There's definitely a good movie in there. There's some parts in there I'm like, whoa, man, that right there, that's good, that's good. But, you know, but sadly... It's just the way everything happens right now. But good on John Watts. And I know he's doing something over on Apple TV. He's going to do something smaller. Something, again, you just got to take these breaks. Even Zack Snyder has talked about it. Like when he was talking about horse um, horse latitudes, he was like, that's a passion project, a small movie that he wants to do that's going to have no green screens. And he's like, I, he's like, I don't want to see green screens anymore. I mean, of course, now he's doing Rebel Moon, which is green screens. Um, but at the same time, it's just like, what he's what, what well at least what Zach's doing right now he's doing his own passion projects his own concepts his own worlds his own universe and everything like that I'm just glad that now like when you have directors like John Watts and Justin Lin that were involved with these big huge studio movies that you know they're constantly getting notes left and right from studios and producers and all this stuff. It's like, just, just take a break and just do re remind yourself of why you became a filmmaker in the first place. And I think that's, what's going to be happening with John Watts and it's going to be happening with Justin Lin and good, good on them, good on them. So there you go. That's just my, my shtick on, uh, on this whole thing. Oh, wow. We got a spammer in here. And now he's suing over uh, a thing that he hasn't even he he wasn't even named in. Oh, oh, I thought you were talking about John Watts there. <laughs> I thought you were talking about that. I was like, what? John Watts is suing over suing Marvel, but you're talking about Depp, talking about Johnny Depp. 
All right. Let's go to the, um, where am I at here? Let's go to the Twitter questions. See what you guys have to say here. All right. Eric, so Dave, with Zaslav's given priorities with DC, how likely will it be that a Man of Steel 2 gets announced this year? I don't know. I don't know how likely it would be. It's just, ah, especially if, yeah, if Cavill ends up getting the 007, that'd be a little harder. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out exactly what's happening right there and just kind of put my ear out there to see what happens with all that, so... But BVS was, shut up, shut up. Andrew Casali, imagine if we ever had the Marvel films of the early 2000s in the same universe. Well, I'm sure some of these people might show up, but I don't think all of them will. That'd be interesting, but yeah, I don't I don't see Eric Bana showing back up, that's for sure. I don't know about Affleck either, so. Futuro, do you think Jay Leva is trying to tell us something by releasing his storyboards? Yeah, he's trying to tell us of how awesome he is and all the cool shit he's worked on. But yeah, maybe he's trying to push for like, hey, we got to get something, you know, I'm, I'm still down for do something that has to do with the Snyderverse. Anderson Miller, chances on the Margot Barbie movie actually being a Deadpool-esque rom-com with a hard R rating. That's all about pushing, uh, pushing, showing that Barbie can be just as badass as G.I. Joe. Only way I could see it being worth watching. Well, I don't know if when it comes to uh, what's her name, um, Greta directing she's kind of artsy so i don't know if it's going to be like deadpool-esque you know r-rated rom-com i don't see that happening but i'm still very intrigued on what the fuck that movie is going to be cooper knox i'm hoping that universal gave good old vin diesel a hard talking about putting his ego aside on fast x otherwise it'll be shit canned now it definitely won't be shit canned because there's so much money on the table. Apparently, with uh, just with, with every day, they're losing like six hundred thousand to a million dollars, uh, trying to find a new director and stuff like that. So, <laughs> Mr. Lewis, you're uh, just take that paycheck, just let Vin Diesel do his stupid shit, and say his stupid fucking family lines, and that's you know, and just 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 take the paycheck, Burtz. Here's my question, Dave. Are you excited for the Constantine HBO Max show? Objection, hearsay. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm always you know excited for any kind of Constantine, but now I'm like wondering if that's even going to fucking happen. I guess we'll see. Ryan, Dave, have you started watching The Offer on Paramount Plus yet? No. It's really great and has an amazing cast, including the beloved Nora ooh, Arna Zedder, who, of course, was in uh, Army of the Dead, which, yeah. And Matthew Good. Yeah, so both Snyder alumni. All right, I'll have to check it out. I'll have to, I got to finish Halo, or I got to catch up with Halo. The next Fast and Furious movie. <laughs> it's going to have aliens in it. It's going to fucking have aliens in it, yes. Would not be surprised. Jesus Christ. All right, we're good. We're good. Okay. Uh, Mike, Soup's Kenobi. If I was a betting man, I'd say the only shows that will most likely survive are Superman and Lois and Doom Patrol. Yeah, I would uh, agree with that. I would agree with that. Mr. David Smith, Vin might be might just be bored with the series, so he was sleepwalking through 10. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I don't know if he's bored with it. He's just got a big ego. Jason, I heard Michael Papa John, a.k.a. Uncle Ben's killer, is down to do some interviews this week because Spider-Man... 2002 turns 20 tomorrow. Here's your chance to get him on the vodka stream. And I'd be like, hey, so what was it like killing Uncle Ben? What was it like? And that hair. What was it like getting that bleached hair? That'd be interesting. Be an interesting conversation. But, hey, maybe it could happen. We'll see. We'll see. All right, guys. That is it for tonight's show. Always the Monday show is always a supersized show. Thank you guys for uh, spending some time with me. Make sure you smash that like, thumbs up before you leave. Hit that uh, hit that notification bell if you want to become a member. Please become a member. Do so. Do all that. And uh, if you want to become part of the Patreon, all the links are provided down below. Follow me on all the sock meds because, you know, my tweets are just 
philosophical and everything. Just 100%. Just all fantastic. I mean, I just tweet just the most knowledgeable stuff. It's all you don't even know. So do that. We've got Facebook down there, Instagram. I've been really lacking on my Instagram stuff. I'm going to try to, like, get back to posting on Instagram if you follow me on Junk to Film on Instagram. It'll happen. Don't worry. I'll get back to it. I swear. I swear to God. Hey, Captain Gator Girl. They think I'm hiding in the shadows, but I am. I am the shadows. There you go. Oh yeah, you finally watched it. There you go. You finally watched it. So hopefully you got. You loved. I mean, it sounds like you enjoyed the Batman. So I'm glad to hear that, Mickey. Um, like I said, I watched it again too over the weekend, and I was like, this movie, just fucking movie. I mean, I tell you, it's just. It's just unique. It's just unique. You know? It's just unique. So, absolutely love it. Anyways, guys. All right. Love you. Let's see. Am I good here? Yeah. I love you, and uh, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Same junk of time, same junk of channel. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.